This is Hero from Navigational Interpretation and Analysis of Neural Nuclear Imaging. I'm you, an assistant. I will talk about brain perfusion spec diagnosis of dementia. In Alzheimer's disease, the most common cause of dementia, glucose metabolism PET is more useful than brain perfusion spec. Compared to healthy elderly, Alzheimer's disease shows hypometabolism in bilateral parietal cortex and posterior cingulate gyrus to procuneus as indicated by arrows. Compare brain perfusion spec and FDG PET in the same case. Due to the difference in spatial resolution, the hypoperfusion in spec is less distinct than the hypometabolism in PET, but the accumulation pattern is similar in spec and PET. Let us further compare PET and SPECT in the same case. In the case of Alzheimer's disease, bilateral temporal parietal decreased accumulation is more evident in PET, but is also seen in SPECT. This is a case of dementia with Lewy bodies. The pattern of decreased accumulation in the occipital and parietal lobes is similar in PET and SPECT. This is a case of frontotemporal dementia. The pattern of decreased accumulation in the frontal and temporal parietal lobes is similar in PET and SPECT. As you can see, glucose metabolism PET provides clearer images than brain perfusion SPECT, but similar findings can be obtained with brain perfusion SPECT. Here are three areas of interest in neuroimaging in early Alzheimer's disease. The first is the inferior parietal association cortex including the angular gyrus in Brodmann's area 39 and the supramarginal gyrus in Brodmann's area 40. Disorders in this area can cause apraxia, acalculia, aphasia, and disorientation. Next are the posterior cingulate gyrus and procuneus. Disorders in this region cause episodic memory impairment and disorientation such as topographical dysod. Finally, there is the medial temporal lobe especially the hippocampus and the entorhinal cortex located in the anterior part of the parahocampal gyrus. Disorders in this region cause memory impairment. The following is an explanation of the key points of brain perfusion spec reading in Alzheimer's disease. First, transaxial images should be taken to determine if there is a decrease in perfusion in the parietal lobe. This is more pronounced in early onset cases than in late onset cases. Mild left-right differences can be seen. Next, look for decreased perfusion in the posterior cingulate gyrus and procuneus. This is determined by sagittal sections, but since perfusion in this region is high when the patient is awake and resting, it is difficult to determine a mild decrease by visual evaluation. Statistical image analysis methods, which will be discussed later, can be helpful. Furthermore, Reduced perfusion in the medial temporal lobe can be determined by coronal sections. However, despite the presence of atrophy, hypoperfusion in this area is often not evident in early stages. In advanced cases, there is a perfusion decrease. On the other hand, it is important to note the areas where perfusion is preserved. Pericentral sulcus cortex, occipital lobe, cerebellum, basal ganglia, and thalamus should be assessed on transaxial images for preserved perfusion. In Alzheimer's disease, there is a discrepancy between the area of decreased perfusion and the area where cerebral atrophy is observed. A statistically significant decrease in perfusion is seen in the parietal lobe to the posterior cingulate gyrus and procuneus. On the other hand, atrophy is more pronounced in the medial temporal lobe. In the medial temporal lobe, Perfusion tends to be maintained compared to atrophy, suggesting that a compensatory mechanism is at work, which is called perfusion compensation. In the posterior cingulate gyrus and procuneus, there is a marked decrease in perfusion compared to atrophy, which is referred to as perfusion depression. The cause of this is the presence of amyloid SS protein deposition in these areas, in addition to the inhibition of perfusion due to remote effects from the parahocampal gyrus via the papase neural circuit. This figure shows the results of statistical brain imaging analysis using statistical parametric mapping SPM, to detect areas of significantly reduced cerebral perfusion in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. There is a significant decrease in the bilateral inferior parietal lobes, posterior cingulate gyrus and procuneus. In the EZZ score imaging system, EZI, a statistical image analysis method, 
the areas of reduced cerebral perfusion specific to early Alzheimer's disease detected by this SPM are surrounded by red lines. The EZI quantifies the perfusion decrease in the volume of interest surrounded by this red line as three different indices. Severity is the average of positive Z scores in specific VOE and indicates the degree of perfusion reduction in the specific VOE for early Alzheimer's disease. Extent is the percentage of the range of Z scores greater than or equal to 2 in the specific VOE and indicates the extent, percentage, of significant perfusion reduction in the specific VOE for early Alzheimer's disease. Ratio is the ratio of the extent of significant perfusion reduction in the specific VOE for early Alzheimer's disease to the extent of significant perfusion reduction in the whole brain. It indicates the selectivity of specific perfusion reduction for early Alzheimer's disease to perfusion decrease in the whole brain. Longitudinal brain perfusion spect image of Alzheimer's disease with onset in the 50s. At X years, there is decreased perfusion in the right temporoparietal lobe. Three years later, there is decreased perfusion in the bilateral temporoparietal cortex, which is more pronounced on the right side. The EZI shows hypoperfusion in the right parietotemporal cortex and posterior cingulate gyrus to procunius at X years, with high severity 1.8, extent 42.2%, and ratio 6.8. The thresholds for high values of these indices are severity of 1.2 extent of 14.2%, and ratio of 2, 2. Three years later, the bilateral temporoparietal cortex showed a progressive decrease in perfusion and the frontal lobes also showed a decrease in perfusion. Severity and extent increased, while ratio decreased due to the presence of reduced perfusion in areas other than the specific VOE surrounded by the red line. Longitudinal spect image of brain perfusion in a patient with Alzheimer's disease in his 80s. At X years, there is mild hypoperfusion in the left parietal cortex. At three years later, the hypoperfusion has progressed, but the hypoperfusion is less pronounced than in early onset cases. The arrows indicate that perfusion in the bilateral pericentral sulcus cortex is preserved. In EZI, there is a right dominant decrease in perfusion in the bilateral parietal cortex at X years, with severity 1.3 extent 18.0%, and ratio 5.3, which are high above threshold but lower than those in early onset Alzheimer's disease. Three years later, there is a progressive decrease in perfusion in the bilateral temporoparietal cortex and also in the frontal cortex. Severity and extent were mildly increased, but ratio was decreased. The area from the posterior cingulate gyrus to the precuneus, which is a site of decreased perfusion in Alzheimer's disease, is a region of high perfusion in normal subjects during wakefulness and rest. This area, along with the medial frontal cortex and lower parietal lobe, belongs to a group of regions called the default mode network. The default mode network is a neural circuit that is activated when the brain is not engaged in conscious activity. The activity of the default mode network decreases with conscious activity. For example, Let's look at the changes in brain perfusion during a mental game of charity using the arterial spin labeling method of MRI. We can see that there is a decrease in perfusion from the posterior cingulate gyrus to the precuneus and medial frontal cortex, indicated by the arrows. In the posterior cingulate gyrus to precuneus, activity often decreases with conscious activity, but it can also increase. For example, if we ask people to recall the contents of a newspaper article they read 30 minutes ago, we find that perfusion increases in this area. In the early stages of Alzheimer's disease, perfusion reduction in the posterior cingulate gyrus and precuneus is characteristic. However, perfusion reduction in this area can also occur in healthy people when the brain is consciously active. So, is there any other reason for perfusion reduction in this area? It has been reported that decreased perfusion in this area, as well as in the parietal lobe, can occur during anesthesia and sedation. In addition, decreased perfusion in this area occurs along with the parietal lobe during non-REM sleep. These indicate that caution should be exercised during brain perfusion spect scans until the brain distribution of brain perfusion traces is fixed in order to avoid false positives and false negatives in the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease.
In case of using 99M Technetium ECD or 99M Technetium HMPAO, the following points should be kept in mind from a few minutes before to a few minutes after injection of the tracer and from a few minutes before to about 10 minutes after injection of the tracer in case of using 123 iodide IMP. First, the subject must be awake and not asleep. No sedation should be applied. Sleeping or sedation reduces perfusion to the posterior cingulate gyrus and procuneus and parietal lobe, leading to a false positive diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. In addition, the subject must be instructed not to consciously perform calculations or word generation and so on. Such tasks cause a decrease in the activity of the default mode network, leading to a false positive diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. In addition, the subject must be instructed not to perform memory retrieval. This task causes activation of the posterior cingulate gyrus to the precuneus, leading to a false negative diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. Changes in brain perfusion due to drug treatment of Alzheimer's disease have been reported. In cases that responded to donepazil hydrochloride, severity, extent, and ratio were all reported to decrease. Let's look at another case. A man in his early 70s with Alzheimer's disease. Donepazil hydrochloride has improved his attention and motivation. Visual evaluation of cerebral blood flow spec is difficult to capture the changes. In the ESI, areas with decreased perfusion compared to the normal database are shown in cool color scales, and areas with increased perfusion are shown in warm color scales. Before administration of donepazil hydrochloride, perfusion in the anterior cingulate gyrus, related to attention, and the prefrontal cortex, related to motivation, was decreased. After six months of administration, the decrease in perfusion in these areas disappears indicating that perfusion has improved. There is a coherent report of the effect of donepazil hydrochloride administration on brain perfusion in Alzheimer's disease. It was reported that brain perfusion was significantly preserved in the right and left anterior cingulate gyrus, right middle temporal gyrus, right inferior parietal lobule, and right frontal cortex in 15 patients with Alzheimer's disease who received donepazil hydrochloride compared with 20 patients with Alzheimer's disease who received placebo over the course of one year. In addition, there are reports on the prediction of the conversion from mild cognitive impairment to Alzheimer's disease dementia by brain perfusion spect. The group that converted to Alzheimer's disease dementia had reduced perfusion in the bilateral inferior parietal cortex and procuneus compared to the non-conversion group. The odds ratio by logistic regression was reported to be 2.1 to 2.4. I will now discuss brain perfusion spect findings in dementias other than Alzheimer's disease. In dementia with Lewy bodies, MRI shows less atrophy in the medial temporal lobe and brain perfusion spec shows mildly reduced perfusion in the occipital lobe. Decreased perfusion in the temporoparietal cortex is similar to that seen in Alzheimer's disease, but perfusion in the posterior cingulate gyrus is relatively preserved and is referred to as the cingulate island sign. This is the next case. This is an MRI of a man in his early 60s who presented with visual cognitive disturbance. There appears to be sulcus enlargement in the occipital lobe. Analysis by VSRAD shows that there is atrophy from the left occipital lobe to the left parietal lobe. The diagnosis of posterior cortical atrophy was made. Compare with brain perfusion spec from three years ago. The perfusion decrease in the left occipital and parietal cortex, which has been seen since this time, is more pronounced. This suggests progression of the disease. Ezide shows that the perfusion decrease in the left occipital and parietal cortex, which was seen three years ago, has progressed and extended to the contralateral side. Posterior cortical atrophy is a neurodegenerative disease characterized by visuospatial and visuoperceptual dysfunction. Memory impairment is absent or mild, if present. Imaging studies show atrophy in the occipital and parietal lobes from the early stages of the disease, and the most common neuropathological changes are those of Alzheimer's disease. Vascular dementia shows asymmetric hypoperfusion, which should be contrasted with vascular lesions on MRI and CT. In progressive supranuclear palsy, 
hypoperfusion is seen in the frontal lobe, anterior cingulate gyrus, and anterior part of basal ganglia. This is a case of creusult jacob disease. In the first year, the patient was followed up as Alzheimer's disease, but after one year, the dementia progressed rapidly. Brain perfusion spec showed decreased perfusion in the temporoparietal lobe and posterior cingulate gyrus to procuneus, and after one year and three months, the perfusion decrease in the same area became extremely severe. This is a case of hypoperfusion similar to Alzheimer's disease. This is a case of corticobasal degeneration, and MRI shows marked atrophy of the left cerebral hemisphere. Brain perfusion spec shows marked hypoperfusion in the left frontoparietal lobe and hypoperfusion in the left basal ganglia. In addition, the left pericentral sulcus cortex, which is preserved in Alzheimer's disease, is also characterized by decreased perfusion. This case shows multiple microbladings in the temporal and occipital lobes on susceptibility weighted image and impaired memory. Brain perfusion spec shows decreased perfusion in the temporoparietal cortex. In addition to the bilateral temporoparietal cortex, there is decreased perfusion from the posterior cingulate gyrus to the precuneus, which is the brain perfusion pattern of Alzheimer's disease. This case is considered to be Alzheimer's disease plus cerebral amyloid angiopathy. Frontotemporal dementia is described. Frontotemporal dementia includes behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia, progressive non-fluent aphasia, and semantic dementia. The main locus of the lesions in behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia is the frontal cortex and temporal lobe, in progressive non-fluent aphasia the left perisylvian cortex, and in semantic dementia the temporal pole. This is a case of behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia in a man in his late 50s. There is decreased perfusion in the frontal lobe. This is a case of behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia in a woman in her early 70s. There is widespread hypoperfusion in the frontal cortex and temporal lobe. This is a case of semantic dementia. There is hypoperfusion in the left temporal pole. A case of progressive non-fluent aphasia. There is decreased perfusion from the left perisylvian fissure to the frontal cortex. An important treatable dementia is idiopathic normal pressure hydrocephalus. MRI shows dilated ventricles and high convexity tightness. Brain perfusion spec shows an apparent perfusion increase at the high convexity due to the proximity of the cerebral cortex caused by the narrowing of the cerebral pseudocy. These eye findings in idiopathic normal pressure hydrocephalus are characterized by the presence of a zone of decreased perfusion near the cingulate gyrus and a zone of increased perfusion above it. I have discussed about brain perfusion spec for dementia. Please continue to use brain perfusion spec appropriately in your daily practice of dementia. Thank you for listening. If you, if you have, have any questions, questions please, please use, use the, the description. description.